JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley are reportedly considering a deal that would include a large capital infusion into the bank. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. Well, joining us now is Innes McPhee, Oxford Economics Chief Global Economist and Managing Director of Macroeconomic and Investor Services. Great to have you on the show here. Obviously, a lot to untangle here. So we're going to first start with what we're seeing with some of the, the growth, well, at least the, some of the improvement that we've seen with regional bank stocks on this report from the Wall Street Journal. So how much does this speak to this not being a systemic issue then once you sort of see these isolated issues that we saw with SVB and Signature Bank? Well, certainly, I think the thing is that so far what we're seeing is a number of different idiosyncratic problems, and that's created what I would describe as a bit of a panic at the moment. Regulators, policymakers in general are now responding to that, offering liquidity, um, helping to calm the market a bit. And, and so far, you've seen a bit of a relief rally. Um, clearly, there's still a lot of tricky days to navigate ahead, not least the big monetary policy decisions that we've got coming up in uh, in the coming days. So what do we think is the best and worst case scenario when you look at that fallout and then add to it what we're seeing ac across with Credit Suisse as well? Well, I think the best case scenario is really one in which central banks step in and provide a lot of liquidity and really make clear that they're going to backstop all the liquidity that's required, uh, both for the big institutions, but also for the smaller institutions, which of course are really important, particularly in the US for lending to all sorts of sectors, but particularly commercial property. Um, and then I think that would help to just really um, bolster confidence and, and allow financial conditions to kind of ease somewhat from where they are today. The worst case scenario is really one in which um, you don't see an overwhelming response from policymakers, one in which these concerns persist and rumble on, financial conditions remain tight, and that feeds into lending standards. And then ultimately, that translates into a lack of supply of credit for the economy, and it pushes us um, into a recession. So, Ines, I want to now focus on Credit Suisse. They got that $54 billion emergency liquidity from the Swiss Central Bank, gives them some breathing room, but doesn't take away from some of the underlying problems the bank already had to get it into this position. So is that the right move? Is, is this a situation where they had no choice but to act? Well, I don't know if they uh, didn't have a choice, but I think it's certainly positive that they've done so. It certainly allows some breathing room, like you say. I think the issues at Credit Suisse, which are well known about, um, are very different from those of SVB or, or most other banks. It's really about the business model and, and how they uh, react and restructure the business and, and move their way into better profitability. Um, I think it's also fair to say that from what we know, the Credit Suisse balance sheet looks very strong, um, including with a lot of liquidity. So it's a, it's a good vote of confidence from policymakers, which hopefully gives them that um, breathing room, as you say, to help try and tackle some of the longer term issues, which really, then they're, they're not the sort of things that you can just make an announcement and then um, it's going to divert market attention. Really, we're talking about big structural strategic um, changes to the way that bank operates. In NS, we've had a lot of people make comparisons to the 2008 financial crisis. Also, even Elon Musk tweeting about comparisons to the 1929 bank run as well. But I want to ask you about this, this tweet from Nouriel Rabini. Granted, he's known as Dr. Doom, so you, you knew it was going to be something on the more negative side. But he said the Credit Suisse crisis is a Lehman moment for the European and global markets. Too big to fail and too big to be saved. It's not even clear what their various unrealized losses on securities and other assets are. Is Credit Suisse too big to fail and too big to save? And, and is it even fair to call this a Lehman moment? I'm not sure it is, to be honest. Um, I think clearly 2008 was a very, very different uh, set of events. We had a big deterioration in the real economy. We had um, uh, losses that people weren't clear about how they were, where they were distributed around the banking sector, who was exposed to who, those sorts of things. Now we are really in a world where we've got a lot more financial stability tools. We really spent the last 15 years thinking about how banks can fail, particularly big ones, how to resolve them. And, uh, you know, it's just not, I don't think it's really a fair comparison um, at all, really. I, I think we'll ultimately see um, how financial conditions play out in the, in the, in the coming months, how the central banks uh, will react to them. Um, but fundamentally, when you think about the, the fundamentals of the, of the real economy, 
there isn't a sign that there's a huge amount of leverage around. There isn't a sign of huge excess imbalances. So whilst we think that the US, for example, will head into recession in the second half of the year, it will be a pretty mild one. And when you think about what that implies for bank losses, um, it's a completely different scenario from that in 2008 so then as we take that look, that take that view, obviously what we're seeing now with the banks, seeing that it's not systemic, I mean, US Treasury is still keeping an eye on this. What are your expectations then for the rest of the year as this, sort of the reverberations continue to play out? Well, I think the first thing to say is that we've already seen uh, tightening in financial conditions um, come through and that played through really from uh, the tightening in monetary policies that we saw already last year. So. We know monetary policy acts with the lag. We know that that's taken a while to get into financial conditions. We're starting to see it in terms of lending um, to the real economy. And that's particularly true in the Eurozone, for example. Um, if this episode rumbles on, it really means that we're going to see more and more pressure on the supply of credit um, to the real economy, potentially also demand as well. And then that will start to have an impact on real economy, we think, uh, towards the end of 2023, certainly the, the second half. Um, so to the extent that this episode um, uh, really means a doubling down of those tightening of credit conditions, then you can expect a worse outcome in the, in the real economy. But for now, we're certainly sticking to our view uh, that we'll see a, a relatively mild recession in the US. Um, we'll see Europe um, and the UK largely avoid recession.